Koto Katua, Kuna Dean Morton, Toko Ingawa. I am delighted to welcome you to this conversation about exercise and would like to introduce you to our panel. We have joining us today two of our Sweet Louise members, the wonderful Sue Cooper and Karen Daniels. <clears throat> and then we have the brains behind the MEETS program, Dr. Stacey Redding. Stacey is the current clinical director of the Health and Rehabilitation Clinic and a senior lecturer in exercise sciences at the University of Auckland. Stacey is also the founder and director of the MEDS program, a specialized group exercise program Stacey developed for Sweet Louise. I'll now hand over to Stacey, who will tell us a little bit more about the benefits of exercising with advanced breast cancer. Great, thanks Nadine. Um, just let me get to my screen shared here. Um, it should be all fairly straightforward and see if this will get out of the way. We can start our slideshow. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to the members of Sweet Louise this morning. I'm very excited to do so. I thought to introduce um, this particular topic and section, I would start with uh, uh, asking a simple question, why exercise when I have advanced breast cancer? Because I think that's a pretty reasonable question for anybody um, to, 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 to have. And so what we do know about exercise and cancer treatment and individuals who have survived uh, successfully treated cancer and are in recovery is that exercise can do all kinds of wonderful things such as reducing the symptoms of chemo brain and reducing cancer related fatigue. Uh, it does uh, things to improve treatment efficacy and uh, improves immune function and improves a whole bunch of physio, uh, phys physical functioning. But what about Sorry, I'm just, there we go. Um, but what about those who are living with advanced cancer? This is a little bit of a different topic because it is um, something that has not been researched particularly well. Uh, and so far, the little bit of research that has been done is suggesting that yes, exercise is still very beneficial for individuals who are living with advanced cancer, um, but we just haven't done enough work yet. And that's really the reason um, why uh, I decided to, to create the METS group, which is run uh, at the Health and Rehabilitation Clinic out of the Department of Exercise exercise sciences at the University of Auckland. And the METS group, um, really what we do in the METS group is laid out in the topic. We meet for a little bit of exercise, we do some talking, and we do some socializing with one another once or twice a week throughout the kind of fall and winter, uh, winter uh, uh, year. Um, the whole purpose of the group is to bring people who are living with advanced breast cancer together with exercise rehabilitation specialists like myself and my staff and the students that we are training to become rehabilitation specialists. We, we come together so that we can learn from one another and maybe together we can discover the most effective ways to use exercise as a means to reduce the symptom burden and improve the overall quality of life for individuals who are living with this condition. So what have we learned in the last couple of years that we've been doing this? We've learned that individuals who are breast cancer survivors and individuals who are living with advanced breast cancer have a reduced aerobic fitness compared to aged match women who have not had a cancer diagnosis. And this is relatively important because aerobic fitness uh, is one of the things that can contribute to the sensations of fatigue or having a lack of energy. And it's also um, important because aerobic fitness is one thing that we know is um, changeable by undertaking exercise. We don't know yet if um, in aerobic fitness, how much we can improve it with exercise in people who are living with uh, advanced uh, cancer. Um, but we know that aerobic fitness generally can be used to improve um, aerobic fitness. And again, this is important because the other things that we've learned uh, from working with uh, all the ladies from Sweet Louise who've joined our program is that fatigue is a big deal. Um, the fatigue and tools that we've used to measure fatigue um, always comes out as having more impact on daily life compared to, um, again, women who, who don't have uh, a cancer diagnosis. And uh, when we talk about things that prevent people from being active or exercising, the highest scoring or highest rated barrier to taking up physical activity has um, unanimously been a lack of energy, which is related to fatigue. Uh, and interestingly, the also fear of making the condition worse and fear of causing injury were also fairly highly rated barriers. 
So, you know, we're learning a little bit as we go along and, and, and learning um, how we can better use exercise to support individuals who are living with this condition. And uh, we always welcome more participants to, to join our program. Um, most what everybody really wants to know is, is what kind of exercise should I do if I'm living with advanced uh, breast cancer? And I say anything that requires you to move your mass and the M in that last word is optional. Um, for some people, it is uh, might be walking, going from, uh, walking, doing some regular walking. For other people, that might be going to, uh, for a swim. It might be joining a gym class. Or for some people, it's high performance activity, high performance training and athletic training, and those kinds of things. So it's really what I'm trying to say is that you know it's a wide range of what is possible. It's very individual and very dependent on how you know what you like to do and what you, you know and how your condition is and how the the, the medical uh, treatment is going and all of those kinds of things so there's a wide range of possibilities i think that maybe instead of asking what exercise should i do i like to look at it this way and say what what do i enjoy doing or what do you enjoy doing and then what do you want to do um, that's kind of the the philosophy behind the METS group is, is not to tell you what exercises you can and cannot do, um, but really to explore with you to figure out, well, what do you want to do? What do you enjoy doing? And then see if we can't work out a way to make it happen. To me, that's a, a much better strategy um, to, to do than to try and say, well, you have to do this much exercise this many times a week. I just don't think that that's the right approach for, for everyone. Um, there is some cautions, though, that everybody should uh, keep in mind when they're doing some exercise. So whatever activity that you decide to, to, to engage in is that if the activity hurts or it causes you, your pain to become worse, then maybe you know, stop doing what you're doing and, and seek the advice of some experts um, to work out what might be the cause. And also, if whatever you're doing leaves you completely knackered to the point where you can't do the other things that are important in your life, then you should probably stop doing that activity and seek some expert advice. And, and who are the experts? I mean, certainly your, your oncology team um, and, and physicians that are involved in your medical care. Um, also, clinical exercise physiologists, which not a lot of people are aware of just yet, but these are the students that uh, are embedded in uh, the METS program, and they have all kinds of training in exercise and exercise science for healthy people, but they also have specialized training in working with individuals who are living with various chronic illnesses. It could be people who've had strokes, people who've had heart attacks, people that might have cerebral palsy, and people who are, are, are living with cancer. And so they're personal trainers with a whole lot of extra um, knowledge to be able to work with both the training side of things, but also integrate that with the health and, and, and medical treatments that people are uh, often receiving when they have chronic illnesses. Your personal trainer at your gym just doesn't have that extra level of, of knowledge and training and expertise. And so uh, my recommendation is that you seek out some clinical exercise physiologists and of course, physiotherapists that, uh, that uh, might be around there as well. So I don't take up too much of the time from my co-presenters. I'm going to leave you with those final words. Thank you. And let's see, we got to get rid of the share. Uh oh, I need to stop the share, but I can't seem to figure out how to do that. My button's not working. Stop share. There it goes. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you, Stacey. Um, thank you for sharing a bit about the science behind the exercise and also the exciting work that you're doing to support Sweet Louise. And someone who's experienced that work firsthand is Sue. So I'm going to hand over to Sue to share a little bit about her experience with exercise. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I, I, this is the first time I've presented on Zoom, so it's a bit of a, an unusual situation for all of us. So. Um, Bear with me, um, and I just, yes, I'm going to share my story of my journey with the exercise and particularly within the METS program. So uh, for those of you who, who don't know me or have heard my name, I'm Sue Cooper. I'm 62. I live in Auckland. I was diagnosed with um, metastatic breast cancer in 2017 um, after my initial breast cancer diagnosis in 2005. So, um, been on this journey for just over four years now. 
um, I'm ERPR positive and her to be negative with me to my bones and my lungs. Um, when Nadine asked me if I would um, speak at this, I said, oh yeah, not a problem, you know, I can talk about this. And they're like, oh gosh, what am I going to say? Um, so quite fortuitously, actually, their Facebook um, gave me a memory, popped up on the, um, the 12th of February, um, back in 2012. And I had just completed my very first Special K Women's Triathlon. Um, my younger sister was actually done an Ironman. Um, talked me into doing a, a mini triathlon. Uh, loved it. Um, you know, the, the fitness, the, the camaraderie. Um, over my years, I've always been um, a walker, have kept fairly active over different things. Um, then I went on to do another three half marathons, walking them, not running them. Um, so three other half marathons, play golf. Um, I used to ride a 300 plus kg Harley Davidson motorbike. So I was fit. Um, I was fairly strong, pretty active. Um, and then in 2017, when I got the diagnosis that um, the cancer was back and it was in my bones, um, I freaked. I, I pretty much stopped everything. Um, I didn't want to hurt my bones. I didn't want to fracture them. Um, my mindset was very, very closed. Um, you know, we, we all know about the endorphins that exercise gives us. I, I, I pretty much just stopped doing everything. Um, I would had uh, a broken arm. I had a pin inserted into my left femur. I had been on capsidabine. Um, for those of you that have had that medication, you know your feet get really sore, very dry. Walking isn't comfortable, you're in a lot of pain. So yeah, at, at the end of 2019, I was not in a good space physically, but also emotionally, um, because I was just existing. Um, my husband who I used to drag along and walk and power walk ahead of them said, come on, we're going down the path. It was um, sort of in the lockdown time. So I was in, I think like a lot of us, in a bit of a dark space. He said, come on, we'll go for a walk. Um, so supportive, so sympathetic. He took off. I went, oh, great. I'm shuffling around the park like an old woman. Made the mistake of having a look at Matt's My Walk. And as you can know that at when I was training for my half marathons, my average kilometre time was about eight, eight and a half minutes. Um, I had taken 25 minutes to do one kilometre, but it was a start. Um, so as much as I was shuffling along, thinking, you know, if you can't do it like you used to do it, what's the point of it? Um, and that was probably a pivotal moment for me to learn to realise the change that we had going on in our bodies that, yeah, I, I, I couldn't do the speed I used to do, but, you know, a five-minute shuffle was a bit of a start. Um, and then in the March of 2020, we were um, blessed with the opportunity to join um, Dr. Stacey with the MET program at Auckland University. What a game changer. Um, I had been favouring my, my leg and my hip because of my surgery. I had no balance. I had no strength. I had no confidence. Um, everything that I did, I thought I was going to break a bone. I was going to make you know, myself worse. So the team that we had at um, the university were amazing. Um, for them... You know, they could actually practice all the theoretical stuff they were learning for us. We were in such an amazing, safe environment. We had one-on-one -on -one support. Um, my first couple of sessions, I literally was learning to stand from sitting again, to do it correctly, to put my balance on my feet and, and, and evenly sit up and, and thinking, wow, who would have thought this would actually be making me puffed? Um, learning how to stand up again, um, had to stand on one foot and balance. Um, so over the over the month, I had got such a, 
a, a drive to get back into doing some exercise, to get back into being able to walk upstairs without huffing, but to do it safely and, and to have fun with it. Um, we, we had great times. You know, everybody was very shy to start with because everybody's in their own little wee, oh, you know, don't quite know what's doing. Um, but at the end, you know, it was so lovely to see the, the progress that everybody made. Um, and yeah, I probably won't do another half marathon again, but um, I'm back playing golf. I've got um, a healthier mindset now that it's okay to do a five minute walk. I don't have to go and do an hour's work. I don't have to go and do, you know, if I want to do in the garden, do 10 minutes, do half an hour, and then rest and stretch. Um, the, the exercise is now just part of my life again, whereas for so long it wasn't. Um, so it was, it was a lot, it was a lot to learn about the physicality of exercise, but also how it impacts us. As, as, as people with NBC, um, you know, the, the anxiety is about, oh, you know, will it make it worse? How is this going to affect my treatment? Um, all of those sorts of things. And having other people in the same boat is so good because we could talk about it. We could say, well, you know, how do you manage this? And, um, you know, how do you manage those? So if there's an opportunity for anybody um, in Auckland and hopefully elsewhere um, to join these programs, I highly recommend it. It's, it's, it's been a, a game changer for me. Um, I used to joke to say, and say, well, I hope you can improve my golf game. And he said, well, I don't think I can do that. Um, but I did let um, Sassy you know before, actually, I've played my best golf this summer. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it's awesome. Oh, Sue, it's wonderful to hear your story. And I just want to thank you because, um, yeah, it was obviously very hard for a while and you found a way of overcoming your fears and anxieties and uh, your determination is incredible thank you for sharing I've loved listening to you and I'm sure everybody helps us thank you thank you, thank you. if, if so, you go on any pro golf <laughs> tours though I do think that maybe a, a share of the profits should come. <laughs> oh okay okay <laughs> I'll, 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 hook, Fair I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Lydia know that I'm, I'm available <laughs> Yeah, Lydia, watch your back. <laughs> um, and now we have our other Sweet Louise member who is going to share her experience firsthand. Hi, Karen. This is Karen Daniels. Over to you. Kia rana, everyone. Hi, everyone. So good to see you all on, on, online. Thank you, Stacey, for sharing what you did. You know, it's invaluable info. And Sue, thank you for sharing your journey with us and being vulnerable with it. So. Yep, so I'm a mum of two. I've got a son who's um, 20 turning on, uh, turning 50, how old I feel like, and my daughter's 12. Um, and so I was, I was diagnosed with HER2, HER2 positive, um, misdiagnosed actually, 2015. Then I was diagnosed with metastatic cancer. I think it was at the end, towards the end of 2019. Um, so that came as a big shock to me and yeah you know when I was initially diagnosed I was in my early 40s um, in 2015 I had just finished a bodybuilding competition so I was quite fit I, I won't say I was healthy because I mean I got diagnosed so I can't be healthy but I was quite fit and strong um, and so when I got the news you know that I had the big C I thought oh man how can this be happening I mean, I thought I was actually doing all the right things, you know, that people tell you to do, you know, do the exercise, eating well, but I reflect back now, you know, there were things in my lifestyle that, um, you know, probably weren't good, you know, so I wasn't getting this, you know, I wasn't, I was operating on five hours sleep, which was probably not ideal. So there were things that I kind of reflected on that um, I've learned from um, and so forth and I've improved on. Um, with regards to my lifestyle so I've always been relatively active I've always been a driven once I uh, person once I um, commit to something I pretty much um, stick to it you know and so with bodybuilding I only did one competition I wasn't planning on going elite level with that because it requires a lot of discipline it really does it's I think one of the toughest sports that you could ever compete in 
Um, and um, so I just wanted to just kind of prove to myself. I always like to, to sort of, um, yeah, um, uh, I'm a, I, I always set high standards. I always set goals for myself um, every year. And so, yeah, I just wanted to prove, um, you know, that I could go onto the stage and actually go through the whole process of bodybuilding. And so I proved that and I managed to get it. And then I got diagnosed with, with breast cancer and I stopped training after that. I just wasn't in that mindset. That, you know, I was going through a whole lot of emotions. So then, um, so I did have it. Yeah, I, 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 I did actually have it since 2015, even though it was a misdiagnosis. Fast forward to about the end of 2019, diagnosed with mystatic. They had found spots in my lung and liver. And um, yeah, and so I went, I did, I did all of the treatment under the sun that they gave me, you know, the chemo, just everything under the sun. I did chemo for eight months. Um, and then I got info, you know, and I'm really thankful for Sweet Louise because it was really hard, you know, if you feel like you're on your own and you really need people to kind of guide you and navigate you through this cancer journey. Otherwise, you're kind of left to your own devices. What do I do? Who do I talk to? You know, what's out there? What kind of other support's out there? So I'm really thankful for Sweet, sweet Louise for being part of my journey back then. And that's when I met Nadine and Nadine's been so awesome. And so throughout, you know, like while I was doing my treatment, um, you know, Sweet Louise was, you know, kind of drip feeding information um, and so forth. And he, even the nurse that was looking after me, my oncology nurse, she uh, and my doctor, they, was, they were, you know, talking to me about the benefits of exercise, that it's important. You go for a walk and, and so forth and just keep that up and, um, you know, it'll improve, you know, your well-being. And they were saying things like it'll reduce the risk, you know, like post post treatment, it'll exercise will reduce the risk of it getting worse or coming back and whatever. Um, and so, yeah, that kind of got me excited. So I just wanted, um, I wasn't sure at the time when I was going through treatment, how, what's safe? What are my safer limits? What can I do? And I know um, Stacey mentioned that in, in his presentation and so did Sue so I kind of like held off I didn't do anything because I wasn't sure and even when I was going through chemo you know I was too tired I couldn't even walk up the driveway um, and walk back my yeah it was it's too tough for me so I had um, already committed in my mind that once I finished my treatment which I finished the early part of um, 20 um, 21 I think it was um, that I would um go back to exercising and so through sweet louise i had introduced me to the paddle boarding that there's paddle boarding for us women um, and that there's dragon boating and there's this mets program so i tried the paddle boarding and i did one session i didn't like it <laughs> it was just it was too hard for me um, and then i tried the dragon boating um, but then i took on powerlifting at the same time and i had to choose between continuing with dragon boating and I loved it I actually did it for like a month or so and powerlifting so I went with powerlifting um, and so with exercise I started with my physiotherapist and that the funding came through pink and steel and so she basically helped me with a range of motion with the, the, the arm the side of the arm where I had my mastectomy um, and so she helped me with my range of motion but I was kind of like I'm the kind of person when it comes to exercise, I know my body's limits. I know how far I, I need to push my body. And I kept saying to my physio, you need to give me more. We need to progress this a little bit more. She was holding me back. You need to just take it easy. And anyway, I just thought, okay, now, nah, you know what? I'm just going to go with this METS program. So I, I was hassling Nadine. Oh, Nadine, I really, I'm really keen about this METS program. Um, when can I sign up? So I signed up and the first thing, I was just really excited when I when I went to this METS program. Um, the first thing that they asked me was, "What is what are you? What's your goal?" And I said, "You know what my goal is. I want to be able to go to a gym because I was planning on joining a gym. I want to go to a gym and I want to be able to do any exercise, especially um, and use any machines. That's my goal. And I need you guys to help me get there." So my mindset was already strong then because I'd already planned it while I was going through my treatment because while I was going through my treatment I, I felt like I was in lockdown for a whole year I hardly went out anywhere and so forth so I joined this METS program and oh, I tell you if it wasn't for METS 
I, I don't know where I would, have, I would be, you know, today because they helped me, they encouraged me, they inspired me, they, they, they sort of um, helped me to get to where I am today. Um, and so I, I told them, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing powerlifting and I need clearance from, from you guys to help me get into powerliftings. Um, and so I guess I think it was, I can't remember how long, six months, seven months, maybe longer than that, um, that I was doing the METS program that year. And then finally, they said to uh, my, um, my the, the, the student that was looking after me, he said to me, well, if you can do a barbell bench press, I've just bench, just bench the barbell, which is 20 kg, um, then yeah, we're going to clear you to be able to do powerlifting. So that was my goal. I need to bench that barbell. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it when I first started at METS. So I really enjoyed the METS program because it's structured, you know, you're in safe hands. And, you know, I'm thankful to Stacey because Stacey spent time one-on-one -on -one having discussions. I'd pick his brain and stuff like that. And I'd, and and the, the thing that I said to Stacey, which really, really helped me push myself forward, was I said to her, asked him, Stacey, how do I know what exercise is safe for me to do? He said, well, so long as you're not in pain, um, you know, and, and you have the energy to do it, um, then yeah, go for it. And I thought, well, okay, that's it. I'm set. Um, that, that, it, I'm not in pain. I can go to the gym and I can do all of these things. So yeah, so um, I'm thankful to METS. I'm thankful for METS because METS has been part of my journey for powerlifting. And so um, since um, COVID, I've, before pre-COVID and during, um, yeah, I've been able to compete in three powerlifting competitions. And um, yeah, I'm really proud. I'm proud of the fact that, um, yeah, sure. I've, I've been through all of these health challenges um, and I've had to overcome all of these health challenges and really set myself goals because who knows how long I'm gonna be, you know, on this earth for, I may as well just make the most of it while my body can. And, and it's awesome um, that as a result, um, of doing this METS program, it really inspired me to study. So now I'm, at, I'm, I'm completing my master's in sport, exercise and health um, at AUT. And um, I'm wanting to train to be a clinical exercise physiologist. And, um, and so, yeah, I'm really, really excited. So yeah, I think life is for living. You know, we just gotta, I mean, I've got to think about my children, my, my mom, you know, my family and so forth. Um, and I just, you know, just try and approach life with um, a strong mindset, a positive mindset, you know, and just utilize, you know, whatever resources and support that I have around me. So it's basically my, my journey. And um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for sharing your story. We love hearing what you're up to and we look forward to seeing where this takes you. And good luck in October in Australia. Let us know how you get on. Mm. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure, are we doing questions now or later on? Yeah, well, we've got one or two questions. If we can ask them quickly that had come through that are specific. Um, but yeah, thank you all. I mean, it's so fantastic as, here, as well to hear that it is possible, you know, just get out there and give it a go. And as long as you're, you know, getting the advice and working within the limit, you know, you can world's your oyster, you know, try new things, go back to things that you used to do. So that's really, really encouraging. Um, and I should probably motivate myself to do the same. <laughs> but on that note, um, if I can hand over to either Amy or Kendra, should have, I think there's one or two questions. Yep, I've got one, one question here. Um, it says, I'm not able to drive anymore and using a wheelchair for lots of my boat mobility, but I'd love to get more physical confidence with ability back again, wondering how to get back there. Actually, I was just uh, I, I was just responding to Eliza oh. <laughs> over the chat. I was going to say that uh, we should um, we should uh, uh, um, um, connect uh, again and 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 with Cindy and see if we can come up with something that we can do on uh, online over Zoom and uh, what other other kind of um, um, avenues that we can connect when you you aren't able to travel into the clinic. So we do do uh, virtual um, appointments. We do do things over uh, over the internet using a Zoom platform. They're not as they're not as nice as being able to be in person, um, but we can still do a few things that way. Yeah. 
Great. Um, we, have, we have another question here just about um, from someone saying they're quite keen to join the METS program and is it going ahead, which I think you, you've sort of answered already. Um, yeah, this, uh, so we've got uh, another, we've got enough uh, funding uh, available to, to run the program again uh, this year. It'll probably start sometime towards mid-April. It takes uh, a few weeks to get some of the new uh, students um, coming in up to scratch so that they are uh, prepared and able to, uh, to adequately uh, work with individuals. So we've got some senior students uh, um, who've got some experience and then we've got new students coming in. Um, and so it usually takes us about five to six weeks before everybody's ready. So mid-April. Yeah. And I will put the call out through Sweet Louise again to say that we're, <laughs> that we're, we're open. We need to <laughs> I'm sure you'll um, be inundated. I mean, if anybody is desperately seeking um, 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 advice, information, help now before the program gets started, uh, the Health and Rehabilitation Clinic is a full rehabilitation clinic. Um, you can come and see us anytime. You don't have to come through the Sweet Louise, or sorry, through, through the, um, the, the METS group. Um, it's just that the METS group, um, I've got funding to pay for all the costs. Um, if we go the other way, I might have to come up with something a little creative for you. Great. Well, I hate to um, cut the session short because there are so many more things that we could ask, but we will get that message out as to when METS is up and ready for participants and inundate you, uh, Stacey, with requests, I'm sure, to join that programme and continue to work with you in any way that we can to ensure that it goes on. It certainly sounds like it's been a fantastic help to the members we've heard from today and many, many others. Um, and thank you as well to Karen and Sue for joining us and sharing your stories um, and just demonstrating, you know, it is possible. Um, physically, mindset, everything changes. Um, and that, you know, METS has been a part of that journey for you. Thank you ever so much.